Hey, greetings everyone and welcome to yet another episode of Mosh Bits. If you're new around here, then do know that I happen to upload tech and gaming news almost daily, so if you're interested, then do consider subscribing. First up for today, we've got yet another AMD related news topic because the upcoming Ryzen 5600X has been spotted as a top CPU in Passmark for single thread performance. Yes my friends, you heard that right, AMD is finally overtaking Intel in single thread performance and taking the crown yet again which should give you an idea of how well those CPUs are actually going to sell at launch and in the future. I don't think it's far off to say that AMD is actually already dominant in terms of mindshare for both gamers and creators and I do know for a fact that AMD is outselling Intel by a huge margin on Amazon Germany, US and most probably Canada as well. In fact, Linus just posted a video where he showed that the 3600 is the best selling CPU on Amazon aside from being a really great all-rounder. Now, in a previous Moshbits episode, I was also talking about how the 5600X might become the most sought after chip and this benchmark showing a 23% improvement over the 3600 is nothing to scoff at and I think it pretty much confirms it. Sure, the 3600 is, al is about 185 euros here in Germany and the 5600X will be 299 euros at launch but don't forget that we had some leaks talking about the upcoming 5600, that's a non-X variant, coming to the market in December for only 219 euros. Now that will be a better or <laughs> a more accurate apples to apples comparison but even at 10 to 15 percent extra performance that would still be a killer deal especially for first time buyers and builders. Now what do you think? Would you actually build a 5600 XT powered PC in this case? Let me know in the comments below. In other AMD news, the RX 6800 XT's PCB has allegedly been spotted on Twitter and I say allegedly because we can't really tell because the processor section is being covered by something, the memory modules are missing but that might still be one of the new RX 6000 cards that AMD is planning on launching from one of the AAB partners, so think about ASUS as an example. Now, as mentioned by video cards in the article and in one of my previous episodes, this can't be the 6900 XT since that one has so far been rumored to be an AMD exclusive just like the Radeon 7 was. And okay, I was almost ready with this script, getting ready to shoot and then I just happened to stumble upon this article from Igor's lab showing some leaked RX 6800 XT benchmarks and as usual I would say do take all of those with a grain of salt but if you couldn't possibly wait to see if the 6800 XT compares to the, R to the RTX 3080 in both rasterized and ray trace scenarios then there you have it. AMD's card managed to beat Nvidia's 3080 in Firestrike Extreme 4K by almost 20%, 4% in Time Spy Extreme 4K, and lost by 22% in Port Royale's Ray Trace benchmark. Being done at 4K makes a lot of sense, obviously, since the CPU has very little influence on the results, but I'd still be cautious in the way you interpret those results since those are not gaming benchmarks and we don't know much about AMD's ray tracing performance just yet. But if you're fine with rasterized gaming and those results are true, then you might have a reason to be excited for those cards and it's not long until the 20th of October when we'll officially find out, but if anything pops up, I shall let you know. So do get subscribed and also join our crowd discord server where on the 20th of October I will be hosting a live stream watch party for the new RX 6000 cards, big navi, whatever you want to call them. and. Presumably, that's gonna be a lot of fun. Last time we did Ryzen and that was cool. Now from Team Red, we're going straight to Team Green because we've managed to take a look at the RTX 3070 unboxing, I would say. But before that, I want to take a moment and ask you, why on earth are those very hentai-esque packages designs so popular in Asia, like even now? I know that in the Western world, if you might want to call it that way, we also had similar designs for their for the for GPU packages back in the day, but here the trend is actually now long gone and should I say dead and gone because that would be probably for the better. Alas, we looked at quite a few board designs including one from Gigabyte, this being the Eagle Gaming OC, a card which I actually expect to be priced closer to MSRP, and we also looked at the Gain Words cards and a card from Galax. 
I didn't note the <laughs> I didn't write the names for them in my script so um, yeah I guess you're gonna be able to see them on screen or something <laughs> Now, the actual reviews for the 3070 will come out on the 27th of October, so I'd suggest waiting for those, not that you'll have any chance to buy them, as I mentioned in one of my previous <laughs> videos, and if you were somehow looking for or waiting for a 3070 16 gig, then you should probably watch yesterday's video where I talked about them and the 3080 20 gig. Still related to the RTX 3070, we've gotten more leaked benchmarks from 3D Mark showing the RTX 3070 results being in very close proximity of the 2080 Ti. Trying to avoid sounding like a broken record here is a bit hard, but to be frank, this is kind of what we expected from the RTX 3070 since the initial Nvidia presentation. Now, unless we get a massive dump of new benchmarks, I think it's actually time to wait for some proper independent reviews to come out and see if there are any particular issues like we had with the capacitors on the 3080 as an example, because if benchmarks are to be trusted, performance should actually be on par with the last gen's top of the line gaming card, and if you didn't get what that means, I'm obviously referring to the 2080 Ti. But if you're somehow not tired of benchmarks, then you should probably look at the benchmarks that have been run by Puget Systems and BT Dubs. They have an amazing website with a ton of great articles and tools for PC builders and experienced PC builders as well and everything else. They're, they're really cool, so do check them out. Now, the absolute mad lads, because there is no better way of calling them at this point, tested a system with four RTX 3090s, which is more or less 40% of the entire stock globally. Of course, that's a joke. Or is it? <laughs> I don't know. And a Xeon W2255 CPU, 128 gigs of RAM at 3.2 gigahertz, and dual, yes, I said dual, EVGA power supplies because you simply can't run those RTX 3090s on a single PSU. And here's a quick nugget of information for you, actually. The new RTX 30 series cards have a lot of spikes in power usage, especially when you just fire a game or an application. And yeah, <laughs> that just sucks. The total system draw for a system with four RTX 3090s in DaVinci Resolve is actually over 1700 watts. <laughs> At least that's according to their benchmarks, and that's absolutely mad. If you'd like to watch the benchmarking videos, hear what the GPUs sound whenever they're being pushed to the absolute limits, see the results, then I'll just leave the links in the video description for you guys. And now, let's just go into the nibbles, because the creative director at Stadia posted an incredibly stupid tweet yesterday, and I won't get much into it because I'm thinking I might actually do a video on it. Otherwise, I'll probably just pin a comment with my thoughts on it, but you know what? Let's just look at what he said, because Mr. Hutchinson thinks that gamers should be paying a licensing fee to be able to stream the games they're playing, much like you're forced to do with music or movies. But here's a fun thing to think about. Compared to music and movies, video games, including single-player ones, benefit a ton, and I mean a lot, <laughs> from all the exposure and they make way more money, I would say insane amounts of money, if you're looking at some of the latest titles that have come out, which they probably wouldn't be making otherwise. Now, let's take Among Us as an example, and you should be able to see some things on the screen right now. Let's think of Fall Guys as well. Oh, and here's what EA had to say about licensing a game. I nearly said that this guy is worse than EA yesterday. In fact, I think I actually said something <laughs> that he should probably work at EA, but even that would have been false. Now, what do you guys think about it? Should I perhaps do a video on it? And speaking of EA games, a class action lawsuit has been filed in Canada over the use of loot boxes in their games, and guys, I can't tell you how much I love reading this when I've mentioned something similar will happen in my thesis about microtransactions, but you know what? Most of EA's games have been mentioned, but curiously, not Battlefront 2, which is notoriously one of the biggest loot box scandals. Now, if you are curious what this might actually bring to fellow Canadians, well, the lawsuit seeks a restitution of the benefits received by defendants and full amounts of the takings. Which, if my legal speech is up to date, basically means that more or less they're, they're asking for the money back on loot boxes. Now, going back to some leaks, Apple is allegedly planning to release the AirPods Pro 2 next year, priced at $249, 
which yeah it's fine i would say i don't know kind of expensive <laughs> especially since they're only bringing some slight improvements to battery and noise cancellation quite pricey like i said but if this has any chance of making the first version of airpods pro cheaper then i think you might be in luck especially if you wanted to get one of those because i haven't tried them out i just heard and read that they're pretty good but if you're not looking for a pair of apple airpods then i recommend you read maya's blog post on crowds to see the best alternatives and this just might make it for today's episode you guys thanks a ton for watching do make sure to check me out on twitter and visit crowd.com and if you're interested in the articles we covered in today's video links to all of them will be in the video description this has been alex with the red elk signing off bye